Good morning, everybody. Hey, my friends, Jody Breckbill, Stampin' Queen here. Happy Monday, everybody. I am here on YouTube with a new video for you guys. I show up every single Monday for you, uh, but you might be catching this on YouTube or you might be catching it on Facebook. Either way, it's all good. I'm just so grateful that you're starting your week off with me. So um, again, I'm Jody Breckbill. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I am actually located in South Central Pennsylvania. So if you're new, come on in and say hello and let me know. And good morning to everybody else. So before we get stamping, I want to make sure that you guys are aware that this annual catalog, this gorgeous little baby here, getting ready to retire in just a few days. So May 3rd, we will have a gorgeous new catalog. So it is last chance days. So you still have a couple more days to take advantage of anything out of here that's retiring. You could maybe even check the clearance rack uh, on my website. Uh, check out what's left. A lot of things have sold out already, but we are getting ready to say goodbye to this beautiful catalog. So let me just give you my shopping link just in case any of you still want to grab a few items. You can head over to my online store listed below. Now, this baby is coming along. So this gorgeous new catalog is ready to release on May 3rd. So I can only show you the cover right now, but it is coming. And if you do not have a demonstrator that you currently work with and you are in need of a annual catalog, please let me know. I would love to get you a gorgeous copy so that you can sit, grab a little cuppa, uh, highlighter, wish list, and just go through and find all the things that you didn't know that you needed. All right, so we are going to get started today because I have a really quick project for you. And this one is a little card box. Let me find it right here. Just this cute little storage box for cards. So um, this does store the five and a half by four and a quarter size card. So, you know, if you're joining us, not from the U.S., you might need to make your box a little bit different. But there is, it would probably fit. I've got four in there. You could fit envelopes. So I'm thinking maybe five or six cards with envelopes you could put in there. So this was part of my Flowing Flowers class at home. So I do at home virtual classes every single month. And I wanted to just show you how to make a little card box because in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, Mother's Day is coming up, right? Um, and so maybe you wanna do a little gifty, uh, but this makes a perfect gift for anybody really, just to make some little handmade cards and then have a cute little box uh, to gift it to somebody. Host gift would be great. Teacher appreciation, right? That's coming up. So anything that you might need to do a little gifty. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Actually, I'm going to back up one second because I do want to make sure you guys are aware uh, that I have a, cl a quick class at home. It is a technique class and registration is ending April 26th. So I want to make sure you have a chance to grab this class quickly, but it is focusing on our butterflies and flowers layering masks. Can you see these okay? I have dark on dark here. So let me throw this white down. There we go. We can see these a little better. So these are our stencils. These are getting ready to retire. They were super popular and they uh, sold out really quickly. So they were back in stock, but now they're retiring in just a couple weeks. So I'm doing a very quick turnover for a technique class where you would get your pack of masks. Oh, it's getting hard to see them. Here we are. Okay, all of these cool masks. I was a stencil junkie. Like back in the late 80s, early 90s, my gosh, I stenciled everything. And so this just, I love these, love these masks. And these are my favorite ones because of the layering aspect of these. So you're gonna get your package of masks. You're going to get a pack of your blending brushes. You're going to get everything that you need to create these cards. So we've got this one, this one, and this one. So you had all your supplies, everything you need, and a tutorial where I'm going to teach you how to use those masks with this fantastic blending technique to get these gorgeous cards, okay? That's only $25. Uh, you will need to add shipping if you're not local. Description will be in this video with a link. So all you need to do is click the link. There will be a description there, tell you more about the class, and you can actually go ahead and register there. So if you have any questions about that, definitely let me know. But like I said, it ends on April 26th. All right, 
so now we've got the housekeeping out of the way, right? Let's talk about this box. Let me make some room. All righty. So back on track with this little cute box. I have got my score, my score, or my simply scored. Uh, any scoring tool will work. So you might be using your paper trimmer. You might be using your simply scored. Either way is fine. And we have a piece of designer, sorry, not designer paper. It is cardstock. And it is 11 by 7 and 3 quarters. So 11 inches, 7 and 3 quarters. Oops, 11 inches, did I cut it? Yes, <laughs> I almost wasn't sure if I came prepared. So yeah, we got 11 inches long, seven and three, th seven and three quarters. So friends, if you're watching this video, don't worry about frantically writing down numbers. Go to the description, scroll down, and I will post them in the description of this video so that you don't have to go back and keep rewatching. You can just find the description uh, either on YouTube or on Facebook. So what we're gonna do here is put our 11 inch side at the top, and we are going to put some scores in. So I'm using white just because it shows up better for you guys, but the color that I used for the box is actually polished pink, okay? So I am going to score at half an inch, four and seven eighths. So seven eighths is that teeny little one just before the five five and three quarter and 10 and one eighth. So one eighth is the tiny little one just after the 10. Okay, now we're gonna do a quarter turn. So we have our seven and three quarter at the top and we're gonna just do two scores. We're gonna do one at seven eighths, the little one just in front of the one and six and seven eighths, the little notch just in front of the seven. Okay, that's all we need so I can get this out of the way. <clears throat> and then we are going to burnish our folds. So one thing I wanna make sure you know is when you are scoring your cardstock, you have where you put the score in is indented and then the other side is raised up. Okay, and a lot of times people ask me, which way do you fold? So you wanna fold away from the indent, okay? So this is the side I scored on and I'm going to make all my folds away. And that just is uh, because you have already uh, grooved the fibers of the card. So it kind of wants to just naturally go that way. You're going with the, the broken fibers. Now I do love my bone folder. So you want to make those folds nice and crisp. That's again, breaking the fibers in that paper so that your anything that you're doing, your 3D project really starts to go together well can make them nice and crisp. Now I do want to caution you, and I should have said this a little bit beforehand, uh, is that you don't want to score too heavily. So you don't want to be real heavy handed when you're scoring because you don't want to tear through um, your paper. So I also, when I am making 3D projects or something that I haven't created before, I like to get out some of that good old junky cardstock, like not my good Stampin' Up stuff, but this is just generic cardstock from Walmart. And so I do have a pack of that and I use it because that becomes my template. So I'm not screwing up the good stuff, right guys? We don't wanna screw up our good stuff. So we wanna just make a template uh, out of the junky cardstock that we have laying around or paper, whatever you have, get get your, your template, work through it, make sure that you've got it correct. Then you can go back and redo it. Um, I'm such a visual person. Like I can't really always read instructions and make sure it works. Um, I want to make sure that I walk through one and not ruin my ruin my goods. So now that we have this here, we have this tiny little edge right here. We need to do some cutting. So I'm going to cut off these two little corners right here because we don't need them. This is creating the front of our box that's going to tuck in to um, the, like the tuck in flap that's going to hold your box shut. 
So get rid of those right there. Then what I like to do is I do like to kind of bevel these a little bit. It just gives it a nice finish look. You don't need to take much off and don't worry about measuring it because it gets tucked inside your box. All right, now we need to free up these flaps here so that we can make the folds into a box. So just freeing those up, just cutting straight up right to that score line right there. Do it on all sides. And then I'm gonna tell you another little secret that I use and that's beveling these little flaps. So I just kind of go in there from, from the bottom at an angle up to the corner there and just kind of notch out a little tiny bit. Same on this one. And it just helps your box go together a little bit easier so that none of those pieces are sticking out. Again, do not get bogged down in measuring and making sure that it's perfect because you are not going to see this. This is all hidden inside your box whenever it is put together. Okay, so there's what we have. Hopefully yours looks the same. There's that little skinny flap. We got rid of those too. Freed these up so these are now ready for us to fold and put together. So in the interest of time, I did go ahead and do this with my polished pink uh, cardstock. Now, when we're doing 3D projects, <clears throat> we do wanna have a good, strong adhesive. Oh, look at this. I did not even fold these. Oh, and I wrote my, not, I wrote, so there's my part of my template, right? I, I write notes to myself on how this is to be put together, but this one did not get the bone folder done. So I was not in the interest of time saving us, saving us any time at all through the magic of television. So quick, let's just burnish these edges. So our box does go together pretty well. Now this one's gonna have notes, so this is definitely going to be one of my samples, right? This is just, just for my eyes only, because obviously I wrote notes on it. All right, back on track, there we go. So you can kind of see how this box is gonna start coming together, right? There's our little flap that's gonna tuck in here, which means this is the front of our box, okay, with that flap. So since it's flat, I find that it's very easy to go ahead and do your decorating before you put it into its 3D form. So I've got a piece of the Abstract Beauty Designer Series paper. This is retiring, so we will have to say goodbye to this. This is in the JJ Mini catalog. And again, just dimensions will be in the description. So if you wanna know what size these are, just scroll down and I have that being attached to a piece of balmy blue. Then I grabbed some of our white linen thread or white linen um, or cotton, I guess it is, ribbon. This is a trio pack. This is from the Jar of Flowers and this is retiring as well. You get three packs. You get the white one, the um, Misty Moonlight white and silver Baker's Twine and the Jade Gingham. So three ribbons in this one. Um, so we have a piece here and I'm just going to tack this around the back side. There we are. And then I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive there because I don't want that to come off. And we can add this now to the front of our card. Now, if you have Abstract Beauty at home, that designer series paper, you could use any color that you choose or any pattern, I guess, that you choose. I thought this one was nice and springy, ready for to share spring with folks. All right, so our next step now, I have got, nope, where did it go? Here we are, a stamp and seal plus. Now, you do want to have, I think I went off track for a minute. Did I say you want to have very good, strong adhesive uh, when you're putting boxes or 3D projects together? Because you don't want them to come apart. So I always grab my Stamp and Seal Plus or uh, Terran Tape is a great alternative. Or you can even use your Tombow multi-purpose glue. But this Stamp and Seal, as much as I love it, 
it just, it needs a little bit of a stronger bond. And this stuff is no joking. Like this means business. So we're going to put some of our stamp and seal here on these flaps. And I do two strips because I do not want this to come apart. Um, what happened to, did I cut my other flap off? I must have. Well, don't do that. Okay. Leave that flap on here because you need that to put your, put your box together. I'm not sure what happened to it. Oh, well, somewhere yesterday I made a boo-boo. So here we're going to just fold those corners together and make sure they're nice and tight. This one's not going to have a flap, so I might have to do some, some finagling. But like I said, this is kind of just a, a template box because I wrote notes on it. So then this piece is going to come in here like that. Okay, see how they're just going to come corner to corner? Oops, my goodness. I'm so sorry, you guys. Don't get sick. All right, so we just meet edge to edge, and there is our box. Wait a minute. It was hiding. There it is. All right, let's see how good I am at putting flaps on there. I thought for sure I cut it off, but I wouldn't know why I would do that. All right, so. Yeek. All right. It was just tucked in the wrong way. There we are. Now we have a perfect box. Then these flaps will fold in just like that. And that little flap folds shut. And there is your cute little box ready to embellish. Okay, so let's do some quick embellishing here. I grabbed my strawberry builder punch and I'm gonna punch out three little strawberry flowers. Now, sadly, this is retired. We are, it's already sold out, the stamp and, no, 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 sorry. The punch is still available, the stamp is sold out. Then, what I like to do with these guys is grab my little squishy pad here, or it's also called the Stampin' Pierce mat, and let's lay our flowers on there. I'm gonna grab my picker tool, and this end right here that has the stylus, the little, ball end and I'm going to just, let's get the bigger end. There's a smaller one and a bigger one. And I'm just going to punch them right in the middle and look how it just kind of gives them a little bit of a 3D effect. I love that. Next step is we're going to take a strip of basic white and are just a note. So I was using flowing flowers. This one I'm going to miss terribly. I love this stamp. It's just a stamp. No bundle. It's just stamp, sink, and paper for this one. You can make some gorgeous projects. We've got our polished pink and our just a note since we're making this as a card storage, a little card box. So there we are, just a note. And we're going to banner or flag that end, okay? So I grabbed the classic label punch. I think that's what this is called. It's a classic label? Tailored, ta tailored label? Oh, I can't remember his name. Anyway, it is retiring, and it's perfect for making little notch ends. I also have my banner punch, but it is packed away for an event. So I grabbed this one. So this one's retiring. That's a great, a great punch. I'll miss that one too. So let's add this to our box with some dimensionals. Get, all, get out those old pop tarts. Put a couple pop dots right there. And I'm going to have that just hanging out here on the edge. And hmm, that's an awful lot right there. That's okay. I might have trimmed that down, but let's let's put a put a flower there how about that so snot dots to the rescue or as most people call them mini glue dots and i love using them so there we go there we can just put that flower right there and then we'll put a couple more around it be very careful when you're pulling them off because you don't want to tear 
Oh, there was there is a lost glue dot there. Let's get that one back. There we are. Now I have some metallic pearls here. These are retiring as well. We have gold and silver. They're still available, but they won't be for very long. And I'm just going to pick up a couple of those. Again, I got my picker tool out, or as I like to call them, my go-go gadget tool. It's like the Swiss army knife of stamping. I use it constantly. So if you do not have a take your pick tool, I would put it on your list. That It is just an amazing, amazing tool. There we go. So we've got our little decoration on there. Then our final step is going to be a little bit more ribbon. I'm just going to do a quick knot here just for interest of time. Tie ourselves a little knot here, but you could also do a bow. Sometimes knots are where it's at. It gives you the same effect with less frustration and perhaps bad words. Sometimes I just cannot get my fingers to work to make a pretty bow. So there we go. There is our beautiful little card box. So here it is with a bow. And there is your cards that you can store in there. All right, my friends. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Hopefully you guys will go and make your <coughs> sorry, make yourselves a cute little storage box and give some of these gifts away to, to uh, friends and family. Now, one real quick reminder is about our class at home, our, sorry, technique class to go. Don't forget, we've got the masks, we've got these three projects, and the blending brushes. And if you wanna see a sample of how this works, I do have a video from last week uh, where I created this card. So you can actually see the masks in action and it should be popping up on the screen here shortly. Just click that link and it will take you right to uh, the video that I did last week with this gorgeous purple butterfly. All right, my friends, there's also a link to subscribe. So you can hit that and make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the little bell icon. Don't forget that because it will give you notifications every time that I'm here on YouTube. And if you are on Facebook, don't forget to follow. All right, my friends, thanks so much for joining me. Have a wonderful week and come on back and visit me next week for Movie Monday.